Mmm, it's an orange juice. What's up everyone, this is OJ. We're getting four new cards. Just like the last round of cards, I won't be able to go into detail about card interactions because the stats aren't set in stone and they're subject to change. So bats are a common card. Four tiny flying creatures with big ears. Having big ears doesn't mean they'll listen when asked to stop attacking you. Bats have two elixir and have really low stats, so they're another cycle card. They have the exact health and damage of skeletons, and their stats scale exactly like the skeletons do. At tournament standard, they have 67 hit points, so archers and witch will one-shot them. Even the ice golem's death nova will kill them as well. But they're really fast, so they could potentially run away before it explodes. It does take two attacks from a spear goblin to kill one bat. They're flying, so you can't log these babies. But they do cost two elixirs, so it's completely justifiable to use zap on them. Just like skeletons, they have a 1 second attack speed, so naturally, they also deal 67 damage per second, and there's 5 of them. So they have a collective DPS of 335. Compared to 3 minions, those guys have 252 DPS. They're going to perform amazing on defense as long as your opponent doesn't have zap. They can survive 1 hit from lava pups, plus they one-shot the pups. With the introduction of this card, the lava hound is kind of indirectly nerfed. These are closer to flying goblins because they offer almost the same DPS per elixir value. But they're flying units that have a very fast move speed, so they'll move as fast as goblins do. Most important difference is that they outpace minions. Another thing to note is that this is the first flying unit in the game that doesn't have a ranged attack. Minions have a two tile range, whereas bats are actually melee. The bats are really fast flying skeletons. They have a very fast move speed, can fly, and have high damage per elixir. This justifies their 2 elixir cost. They're going to be a great value defensively or offensively, planting a miner to tank, catching your opponent off guard with their massive DPS as long as they don't have zap. It's really annoying to deal with. This card is versatile like skeletons, ice golem, or minions. Their low cost fits them into most cycle decks. They even fit in heavy decks like a golem or triple musketeer deck because it keeps the average elixir down. The Night Witch is a legendary card that costs 4 elixir, summons bats to do her bidding, even after death. And if you get too close, she isn't afraid of pitching in with her mean looking battle staff. What sets her apart from the regular witch is that she costs less, summons flying bats, and has a melee attack. Since she isn't a ranged unit, her health is significantly higher. At 750 health, she dies to rocket and lightning. She's tanky enough to survive a fireball, but comboed with the log and she'll die. Her health is also high enough that she can tank one shot from a mini P.E.K.K.A and a big P.E.K.K.A. She has a medium move speed, so she is literally the same waddling speed of a regular witch. She attacks every 1.5 seconds. This is the exact same attack speed as an Ice Wizard, Mega Minion, Dark Prince, or a Valkyrie. Each swing deals 285 damage. This means her battle staff will one-shot a Princess, Dark Goblin, and Archer. Just like the regular witch, this one spawns two bats every 5 seconds. With two strikes, she'll be able to bring the Wizard, Witch, Electro Wizard, Musketeer, or Ice Wizard down to a sliver of health, combined with her bats and they'll die really fast. She does have an average attack speed, so her DPS is 190. Combined with four bats, that's potentially 458 DPS. That sounds crazy good, but don't be alarmed. A regular witch does have 500 DPS, but that's not overpowered because her skeletons are easy to take out. The same can be said with the bats, they're really fragile. The heal spell is a rare card that costs 3 elixir to cast. Heal your troops to keep them in the fight. Friendly troops are healed over time while in the target area. Doesn't affect buildings. It's a straightforward card. It heals 176 health per second over a period of 3 seconds, so it'll heal a total of 528 health. It has a 3 tile radius. This is comparable to a clone or freeze spell. I'm sure there'll be more interesting tech, but without gameplay there's not much to the stats. It's kind of like a reverse poison spell. Last but not least, the Jungle Berry is a legendary card. The bandit dashes to her target and delivers an extra big hit. While dashing, she can't be touched. The mask keeps her identity safe and gives her bonus cool points. It kinda just looks like an archer that dyed her hair white. She has the same exact health as a night witch. At 750 health, she's vulnerable to lightning, yet she's tanky enough to survive a fireball. Just like the witch, she also survives one shot from a mini P.E.K.K.A and a big P.E.K.K.A. She has a fast move speed, so this is exactly as fast as a mini P.E.K.K.A. 
She has a 1 second hit speed, so her attack speed is the same as skeletons or minions. And her attack range is melee. Each of her attacks will deal 160 damage. Since her attack speed is 1 second, her damage per second is literally the same at 160 DPS. If a unit is 4 to 6 tiles away from her, she'll dash straight to the target, exactly like a teleport or blink strike. While she's dashing towards the target, she's invulnerable. This dash damage deals double damage, similar to a prince. With her damage, she one-shots skeletons and spear goblins. But with her dash attack, it can kill archers, goblins, bomber, princess, ice spear, or dark goblin in one shot. It's not particularly effective against goblins just because they swarm her and she only dashes once. So the bandit draft challenge has a few twists. Pick four cards and receive four from your opponent. One of you will get to play with the bandit. Collect one-time rewards as you progress. The bandit herself is releasing on the 24th, but the bandit challenge is going live on the 17th. That means you can get early access to the bandit if you can win this challenge at 12 wins. Even though this is the same cost as a grand challenge, it only offers half the chest rewards because there are other rewards given out. These are one-time rewards. You get 100 gems at 2 wins, 8,000 gold at 4 wins, 1 magical chest at 6 wins, 25,000 gold at 9 wins, and 1 bandit at 12 wins. It's pretty simple, for example if I reach 2 wins, I'll automatically gain 100 gems and I can keep playing the challenge. So once you reach 6 wins, you automatically get to open a magical chest on the spot, then you can continue to play. But let's say you lost 3 games in a row after that and you ended the bandit challenge with a 6-3 score. You can try as many times as you want for the cost of 100 gems. Once you retry, you will not gain the rewards you've already earned. However, you still have a chance at the higher rewards that you haven't been able to reach yet. Once you reach 12 wins, you reward a bandit and the 12 win chest, which is half the amount of a regular grand challenge. Since you're only able to claim those rewards once, there's not much value in re-entering the challenge since it does cost 100 gems for half that chest reward. As for the game mode itself, it's exactly like a draft challenge, except one player gets to decide who gets to play the bandit and who doesn't so only one of you will have the privilege of playing her. Alright guys, so we have Clash with Ash joining us for the draft challenge. So, um, what was it? One of us gets to the, the bandit, Ash? Yes, I guess it's just random. First of all, uh, thanks for coming on Thanks for coming on my channel and me coming on yours, man. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah, one of us randomly gets the bandit. Is that how it works? Yeah, and only one player gets to play her. Interesting. Okay, I, I got her. This is this. Is, oh, I got I got a picker. <laughs> or did I give her to you? I have a weird four cards, man. So how you liking the whole two v two? How you liking the bandit so far, man? Uh, the two v two is pretty amazing. Like, I actually just played a game with Dragon Steak, and he gave me the bandit. I was like, oh, that's so nice of him. And then when I realized what happened, it's because he gave me the bandit because he chose the graveyard instead and had literally no counters to it. I didn't have archers, minions, anything. So I was like, what is this? Yeah, I know. But the bandit, though, she has a... I mean, she's lethal if she hits the tower, you know? Oh, it's crazy. She has a... Did you notice that her dash makes her invulnerable? Yeah, I did. Because... What, what the heck was it? It was, I think, Electro Wiz or something like that, but I had her kind of one-on-one -on -one versus an Electro... I think it was Electro Wiz or a Bowler, but either way... Yeah, yeah, she just bypasses the Bowler. Boom, right there. <laughs> Aw, man. They always give the they always give the good card to the big YouTuber. <laughs> You're a pretty big YouTuber too, man. Uh, so yeah, man, I think uh, so far I love 2v2. I can't get enough of it, man. I, I almost wish it was every day, uh, but I'm sure that's going to be a popular uh, a popular sentiment. Honestly, I think it's a good idea to have it like that because it's just so exhausting. Well played there, well played. <laughs> I, it's, I guess it's because he gave me the arrows, so kind of works out for my end. Uh -oh. Breeze there too. Uh-oh. All right, give me your bandit. Give me your bandit. <laughs> Ooh, nice play there. See, she has a decent amount of HP as well. Yeah, 750 health. That's... That's not that bad. It's a little... It kind of categorizes her with all the other fireball units, like wizard, ice wizard, um, and like all those guys that survive fireball, but like they die to the log. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm a. Uh, oops. Two buildings. I think this is definitely going to be like one of those uh, memorable updates, you know? Yeah. I, I don't think it's going to be like Clash of Clans, Clan Wars, but it's going to be up there. The th It's kind of uh, exhausting because there's so much going on. It's just so much chaos. Like I was playing with Nick last night and Pat and um, all of them. And there's just way too much going on. <laughs> there is. It does feel hectic. There's no doubt about it. Oh, why did I do arrows? Well, <laughs> too little too late, I think, for me. Come on, baby dragon! Uh-oh. All right, we got this. Nah. You don't have anything else, do you? For direct damage? Nope. All right, baby. This is the big push. <laughs> this is the big push. I will see about that. Oh. All right, man. All right, so that's it. That's a good game. GG, man. GG. Yeah. So thanks for coming on. No problem. We'll have to do two v two sometime, man. Yeah. All right. I'll talk to you. Yeah. Take care. Later, OJ.